Okay, we have a quorum. It's six after six thirty. We'll call a meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Yeah, I think Mark Howard, you're here. Just you're here for the uh, housing and economic development meeting, correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, Chris Provost. How are you? Thank you for for meeting with me. Um, I I represent. Uh, a center that we're, we're trying to establish on one mill valley road um i i think i, I did send you a um an email with a brief description on on how the center is going to be uh run um but it's my understanding that the board had some questions for myself and and mark richard is here as well as the business manager would you explain what what this is about certainly uh uh we were we were asked by Commissioner Quinlan to uh, meet with uh, you because there was some question about how the that there was going to be a change in usage in the space. So um, let's back up a, a step. You've been here before, have you not? I, yes, I was. I was. Uh, I came here. Uh, I was trying to look back and see when it was exactly, but I, I can't find the date. But I did come to speak to the the board. In regards to our uh, the support center that was being opened up, I know there were there were questions at that time, uh, and I think that uh, about uh, parking and things like that. But we I, I came and I spoke to uh, this board about it. And uh, just to step back, so it's the the Greater Commonwealth Virtual School, uh, which is a public school of choice in Massachusetts. Students learn virtually. Um, we are we have this support center that's at One Mill Valley that we're looking to open up and we're working with the Department of Education to get approval. We're working with the town. Um, we the intention is for students to um, come when they need some support, some like face to face support, uh, whether they be uh, perhaps a new student, a student who's having some difficulties, a student who needs some tutoring. Um, but it's not a daily uh, school, you know, it is, it is a public school, but it is not running as a school per se, uh, at where there's a daily number of students who are attending every single day. Um, but it is a support center where there will be some teachers, some teaching staff and some students who will come in and provide some, some support, um, and, and provide it both online and in person. Students will be bused there. Um, and so we're working with, uh, Vanpool to, uh, you know, provide uh, a, a dropping off students there, and there will be some staff that will be uh, on site at this uh, location. There were some questions again too. I think at the time because it was it is a, uh, I believe it, you ref it was referred to as a mixed use uh, property, um, uh, and we we had discussed some of that. But there's a you know a dentist office. There's a uh, a dance studio, studio there. I think um, so. Um, Anyway, so that's the that's the the history, uh, and so right now there was some confusion. I, I'll say confusion or just a misunderstanding, maybe as to what was going on there. I think it was uh, the thought was there was going to be no students there, but that that was always the intention that students would um, come into the support center for some tutoring, some help, some uh, some uh, assistance. So you were here on uh, November third of 2020. Yes, and we've been working all that time to get the place uh, going with COVID and, and everything else. It's kind of prevented things from moving uh, moving along, uh, but we're, we're trying to get there and we're, we're just trying to cross those last, uh, last hurdles to get things done. So will you be taking over the whole building or just part of it? Uh, it's just part of it. It's unit E, uh, it's referred to as unit E in the, the building. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, I mean, how many students might you be having there at one point, as, at a single point in time? Off to 15. Okay. What yeah, grades? They, what grades? What's the ages? Uh, two days a week will be middle school, so six through eight, and then another two days a week will be high school students. So that would be nine through 12. So how do you qualify for getting a diploma? That's certainly not what the state requires to get a diploma. Right. <laughs> no, this is just, so this is just for extra help. That's just oh, extra help. Oh, okay. yeah. they, oh. they take all their classes virtually, uh, but this is just for extra help. This is extra help tutoring and assistance for, for students. 
are you going to have people qualified to give tutoring in advanced chemistry or physics or French or? We have that already. Yes. Yeah, we, 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 have, we have teachers all across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Yeah. So that, again, they're, they're virtually, but they're coming there for some more personalized face-to-face uh, -face if they need it. Uh, because some students come to us and they're just not, it's a whole different way of learning for them. Okay. Uh, the, the only question I would have really on the, on the space is the adequate parking. If you have, I mean, is there going to be, how long are the students that are they, I mean, if they're high school students, some of them could have their own cars, I'm assuming. Well, I, I, most, most of the students will be transported by van. By van? Yes. Yeah. Uh, through van, van pool. Van we're pool. working with van pool for them to oh, have okay. routes to pick up students where we have students who would come in. So we're working with them on that. The, I mean, there, it is always a possibility. Some, a parent would drive their student or, or, uh, uh in, um, I mean the, the operations that are there, there is a dentist office that's, that's operates, but there's, you know, there's a limited number of, uh, there's 50 plus sure. parking spaces there. Yeah, there, I'm sorry, uh, Chris. There, are, there are there are 50 plus parking spaces there. Yeah. So I think I think at any one time we'll, with with staff we'll probably be utilizing five. So what's the radius? Where are they coming from? Hampshire County, Hampshire, Franklin, Hamden. Well, they can come as from from anywhere as long you know we, we we're working with you know the the students uh, and their families as far as you know the ones who want to come uh, yeah, we you know, an hour drive, you know, ride in, in a van pool van is, you know, not certainly more than that. We, you know, we wouldn't want, you know, people to be doing that, but it's anywhere around, you know, the Hadley area, uh, you know, that we'd have students that potentially could be Springfield, could be, again, the surrounding communities that, that, um, that send students we have, and I don't have the data right in front of me, but we do, we have students, you know, from all over uh, in Western Massachusetts attend and so I you know it's we, we can't reach everybody this is a, an opportunity to provide some support to students in the area uh, to come out uh, to come to the the support center I mean okay I mean I mean it's, it's, a, it's a business zone you're a permitted use so I personally don't see any issue with what you want to do there so let me read the uh, for, I, I pulled the minutes from the prior meeting. And we're basically covering a lot of the same ground. Uh, it is. Uh, this is where the tap room is, right? It was there. It's it that's closed now. Okay. Prior prior to us us taking over, um, it was it was a karate school. Yeah. Okay. So this is the end of the building, which was a karate school. Correct. Yes. The tap room location still there. The dance, the dentist, and all that. This is yes. uh, was the karate that's been vacant. Correct. So uh, this is the, from the minutes of uh, November 3rd of 2020. Uh, leasing for a virtual school support center, replacing current retail use. Um, the no external alterations, no sign design as yet. If you do, when you do have a sign design, we do want to talk to you again. Yep. Uh, Dr. Zagrodnik question, will number of students create traffic issues? Answer. As a virtual school, anticipate 10 plus or minus for students. Uh, support center, not a school per se, extra help. And uh, my motion, second by Mike, to waive further site plan approval. So I think we've pretty much gone over this previously. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I the building inspectors here, the zoning enforcement officer, as well as the same person. Um, you, you waive site plan approval. You're a permitted use in a permitted zone. You've addressed parking. Um, I don't think there's anything else for you to go do except go forward and good luck. Thank you very much. And we're still waiting on signage, right? Or no? So I, I am. So we worked with a, a sign company. We're we're getting that, and I will I will be coming back with um, with the uh, pictures, the design, the the the, uh, the layout. We're looking to just have something. Kind of follow in the same design as as the current signage that's there uh nothing um out of the ordinary so but i will be coming back to provide that okay so you'll do it just like you've done it here yes yep. yeah very good okay good luck all yes. right thank you thank very you much for time. all right live long and prosper uh, <laughs> thank you thanks. thanks justin roy Uh, 
Uh, how you doing? Good. How are you? There he is. All right. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to be in front of you guys. So uh, I guess I'm here to uh, propose uh, we're, we're doing the construction project on Route 9 for Mass DOT in the town of Hadley. Okay. Um, we're, we've been signed up this past winter, so we're going to be beginning construction this upcoming spring. Uh, and one of the things we needed to find is a construction temporary staging area where we can stockpile equipment, uh, equipment, materials, and things needed to build the project. Um, so we found, uh, we found a area suitable uh, with the property owner anyways. And uh, this is a property owned by uh, Allard's Farm. And obviously one of the concerns, he just wanted us to vet it through the town to make sure that everything was okay. Um, so that picture you're seeing is the approximate area that we'd be looking to use, give or take. Um, it's in front of the solar field on Mill Valley Road. And- What's the uh, actual size of that? Uh, it roughly, uh, just the area that we squared off there, I believe yeah. is like, Three, say 300 feet by 300 feet, roughly. Okay. Um, we weren't, obviously, because there's nothing there. Uh, we, we weren't really picky about the dimensions. Um, we just thought uh, a clear distance away from the road and, and any uh, access points that they need to get into the solar field is, is why we picked that uh, spot. Um, he doesn't, Wayne at Allard's Farm doesn't use it for anything. Um, so it was seem like an optimal choice uh, for the construction. Um, again, I just, you know, I want to stress that this is a temporary site. Um, we're not proposing to build anything on site. We're not proposing to change right. the land or the contours. Um, it, everything we do would be temporary during the construction. Uh, when the construction of the project is finished uh, and we will leave, we would put the site back to the existing conditions um, and essentially like we wouldn't be there, replant the, uh, put back the topsoil plant, any grass that was disturbed uh, and essentially leave as it will, as we found it. Justin, do you have any plans for the entrance and exit? Are you, you know, like some kind of drive off stone or anything to. Yep. So we, tires? we would, Utilize the same access road that's there now for the solar field. You can see on that picture to the left of the red box, there's a, a dirt road with a stone access pad. Um, we would probably have to upgrade the culvert pipe. It's a plastic uh, little drain pipe in the ditch. We would probably have to upgrade that with, with new steel or concrete just uh, to make sure it doesn't fail driving over it. Um, and other than that, we would put uh, additional crushed stone as needed so we wouldn't uh, track onto the road. Uh, and that would just be a constant maintenance to, to make sure we stay ahead of the maintenance so there's no tracking onto the paved surface. Well, um, because we've been, give, the state giving us information is like pulling hen state, but long we've got you here, Justin, we're going to ask you two questions about the whole project. So please forgive us. Um, what's the duration, anticipated duration of this thing? So we're under contract right now through, uh, I believe it's May 2026 wow. to complete the project. So it's a long project as far as duration. Um, okay. There's Multiple a lot phases, to it. Right? There's okay. a lot of phases and, and there's a lot of work. Uh, obviously, we have water work. We have drainage work. Uh, the gas company is going to do a fair amount of gas uh, upgrades in there. Uh, all the telephone poles or, or majority of the telephone poles and, and utilities are going to be shifted because the road gets widened or moved in some areas. So there's a lot of different people involved. And typically when you get multiple parties, the state gives you more time to coordinate and to, to play nice because, you know, we, we know the road's busy, so you can't have everybody out there at the same time working okay um you're going to need board of selectmen approval for this not just planning board you know kind of a waiver if you would and you're going to be driving up and down mill valley road for the next four years with some obviously big equipment 
So the selectmen, I would hope, will want to see Mill Valley Road return to its, its present day position, condition, if not better, because of all your traffic, you're going to be driving on it. Um, right now, it sees heavy car traffic and not a lot of truck traffic. Um, you're going to be driving some, like I said, some really big stuff on there. So that'll be, a, that'll be an issue to address with the Board of Selectmen. We will not get involved in that. So uh, I have a couple of things. One, um, if you're talking about rebuilding a culvert in there, you are, um, you're going to have to talk to the Conservation Commission. Um, the, the wetlands, the wetlands, the, um, the Allard's farm is operating under an agricultural exemption for how it maintains its culverts. But if anything is converted to non-agricultural use, um, conservation commission will want to be involved. Uh, second, that area is zoned agricultural residential. And I do have some reservations about using agricultural residential property for um, a commercial use, even if it is a temporary one. Now, as far as, let's see, do we have a bigger scale here? Um, See what's the third page. Um, what you have, as it happens, all of the any dwellings in this immediate area are owned by Allard Farm, so they're they can do what they want. Uh, but there are uh, three or four houses, private homes, yeah. Uh, back towards the intersection of Mill Valley and Route 9, you'd be presumably going by dwellings at various times. Um, everything across the street is zoned agricultural residential as well. Um, so um, I understand it's temporary, but that's why I, I, I but we really needed to have a discussion with the whole board about it. I mean, my opinion, it's a temporary thing. Yes, I understand it's zoned agricultural residential, um, but for this particular use, I don't have a real issue with what they want to do as long as Mill Valley Road and they work with the Board of Selectmen to make sure that that road is returned to good condition when they're all done. It's going to be, I mean, the, the, the houses that are over on the uh, western end of Mill Valley Road are going to see extreme uh, interruptions probably for the next several years once this thing starts because they're at a, already at a hairy intersection, for lack of a better term, and this additional traffic they're going to be seeing, um, I got to believe a lot of this equipment that they're going to have, when the most construction is going on, except maybe for what's going to be in front of Mill Valley Road, a lot of these construction people are going to learn that if they go down South Maple Street towards Route 9, they're going to get out of the traffic a whole lot faster unless there's police directing traffic at Mill Valley Road. Because right now you see cars waiting there sometime for long periods of time. And when with the construction starting, it's only going to get worse. Mark has a question. Yeah, Mark. Uh, Justin, has the state set uh, particular hours for your work? So the hours are typically going to be seven to three. Okay. Um, there will, I don't know at this time, but I know there's going to be some night work probably reserved for the paving activities on the project just due to the volume of traffic. Um, right. We typically like to do those at night because you get a, you know, you can pave more and get a better product. Um, but I would say for the, for the most part, the construction is going to be 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Really? I'm surprised about that. I would think it'd be more mm -hmm. of a nighttime deal because of the traffic on Route 9. Yeah, we're going to have to obviously work around or work with traffic, but um, 
we do have, uh, I guess, just piggybacking on, on another point I was going to make is uh, the construction. There is a, a decent amount of construction on South Maple Street as well. So from Route 9 to approximately the, the bike path right. uh, is, is all getting construction. So, um, you know, there will be activity, you know, going on Mill Valley to get to South Maple or vice versa. Um, so it's regardless if we were able to use this area as a staging area or not, um, there will be construction traffic on that street um, just due to the location of the work. Um, so how many total miles is it? How many total miles is it? Or how many feet is it total? It's about two miles. And so would you be doing, say, a quarter of a mile at a time or a half mile at a time, or is the whole two miles going to be ripped up? Um, no, we're going to do pieces of, I mean, like, for example, the first section that we're planning on starting is going to be between Middle Street and East Street. Just to give you a, a scale, I'm not, I'm not sure the approximate distance. That may be right. about 1,000 thousand, thousand, uh, thousand feet, 1,500 sure. feet. So um, we'll, we'll break it up into pieces like that. And as the work progresses, obviously, we'll have uh, temporary paving. Um, so it's not like it'll be a dirt road for two miles long. When do you, when do you anticipate starting? Uh, we're hoping uh, you're going to see some activities such as tree clearing and some subcontractor work over the next few weeks. But uh, as far as Baltazar construction and, and water main installation, we're, we're targeting the end of April, beginning of May. Okay. Are so you going to have a, I'm sorry. Was that Jim? Yeah. Are you going to have a, a, a job trailer, you know, somewhere that we can, uh, you know, if the town has any issues or do we go to the state? Uh, the Well, the, the state always can take, take any issues, but uh, we, I'll be, oper myself personally, I'll be operating out of our Ludlow office um, on a daily basis. But the plan is probably we're going to get a field trailer or another uh, small office for building like for our field superintendent. Corey was out playing with Petunia when I got home. Christian, you are not muted. That's what he's doing, yeah. Okay. What about Sarah? Bill, do you want to mute Christian? Just have to find him. Sarah. I don't know what Sarah did, I guess. <laughs> okay. All set. Thank you, Bill. So just to, to follow back up with that, uh, my field superintendent, uh, Rich Zuko, is going to be on running this project. He does want a, a field trailer or another field office to work out of, so... Uh, once that's established, we can we'll share that information with the town. That way, you guys can get a hold of us. So this is you're you're thinking this is probably the best location, and from this you're going to serve the whole let's call it two miles. So there could be if you're working further west, there could be some trips back and forth to where. Uh, yeah. So the yeah. intent the intent with this location, um, and that's a good point. Um, a few people brought up, is there, is there other areas on Route 9 that, that may serve better, better purpose? Um, we are also going to have areas on Route 9 that's going to be closer to the work so we can localize specific equipment that doesn't necessarily need to move that far every day. Um, sure. The excavators that we use have tracks on them. We don't want to be driving those, you know, a mile down the road to park it here. Those are going to be parked more localized to where the actual construction is going to be taking place. Um, the, the real intent for this is we would like to get deliveries of pipe uh, here where we can store pipe. Um, we can put dry materials. We can put clean crushed stone or things that we can utilize. Uh, may, not, may not need it every day, but it's there where we need it. Okay. Um, and This would the, be gated the, as well? Uh, the gate. Uh, potentially could be gated. Yep. Uh, we may throw a chain up with some posts to deter people from driving in. Um, I mean, I was just wondering if you were going to fence this or you don't think you're, you know, that the cows are going to walk off with your materials. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think the area is pretty good. I don't know if we're necessarily worried about uh, theft or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, one of the other thought processes, if, if we can have this away from, the businesses on Route Nine, I think they would, they may, I would hope they would enjoy that better than having uh, a large construction yard right in Route Nine next to a business where people are trying to operate. I feel this location is 
more or less out of sight, out of mind, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and to touch on another point that was brought up about the road uh, in the past, we've th with towns, we've had the same discussion uh, and we can, and I can bring this up to the select board, but we've documented the road such as like a video uh, like a preconditioned video of the road. And that way uh, it covers us and it covers the town for when the project's done. If there's any issues that need to be addressed, we can, we can go to the video and we can say, yes, you know what? Uh, you can look at the condition of the road prior to us showing up. It was in this condition, then we can repair it. And there's no questions asked. Yeah. That, yeah. Like I said, that, that'll be an issue for the board of selectmen. And we just kind of want to, obviously we don't want to get involved in, in their addressing that stuff. So, and I, I kind of, see your point as far as being off of route nine I mean, you're going to be there for the next four years text theoretically and that's going to be a long time to uh i mean i don't want to it's, i mean it, i hate to say but i use the word eyesore working next to all these businesses that it, and you says especially during hopefully the next several christmas seasons there is some very busy places on route nine yeah exactly and, and uh like because the job's so long uh, if we finish up one phase, but our staging area happens to be there, well, those unfortunate neighbors have to deal with the staging area for the full duration of the project, uh, even though that phase may be closer to completion than the others. So yeah. that's the thought process. Any other questions from the board? Comments? I don't know if it is under our, I mean, I, this may just be more for my interest, and I think I heard someone mention it earlier, when your trucks are, when your equipment is moving and you're trying to get back onto Route 9 from Mill Valley, do you have plans to have a flagman out there? Because that's that's a tough intersection. If you haven't tried to get from Mill Valley, get on to westbound, you know, it's tough. Yeah, that is, it is a tough uh, intersection. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons of this project we're going to fix that intersection to make it a, a 90 degree you know a 90 degree t intersection that's more conventional but i, I would think that our trucks would probably just take a uh, take a left out of that potential area and then go to south maple and use the use the signalized intersections to to get back to route nine that may be safer for them okay yeah so i'm not sure that we have authority to allow this, maybe just a consensus that we don't, the planning board doesn't object to it. I, that, that, I was going to say, we, we have no authority on this one, Bill. It's, it's exactly what I was going to agree with. It's just that, you know, what is the opinion of the planning board? And it's really going to be up to the zoning enforcement officer on how he wants to address this, I think, on his yeah. judgment. Is there any, um, is there any medium or any vehicle by which we could ask them to come back if we get complaints from those three or four private homes on the west end of Mill Valley? And I see Tommy's hand up. Thanks. Um, okay. Last time I spoke with the uh, DPW director, the DPW director thought it was a great spot, great idea. And my only concern would be it's more than once that myself and the police department with one of the residents up the road has had issues with the uh, business that's across, you know, on that same side of the road. So I've had gotten, um, you know, complaints on, on the trucks there. That would be, you know, my only input just to let you know that there has been complaints from one of the residents there. Well, they're, they're going to see a lot of trucks going by their area, whether or not the staging area is where it is or not, over the next several years. So, um, I mean, I understand, you know, it's a good point, Tom, and I guess um, we can't say, I mean, it, it's, it's a unique situation right here. Well, it's, it's not... It's not their first rodeo, you know, th these people have been doing construction work for a long time and they've had the, the usual complaints, I'm sure, but uh, from our point of view, it's a necessary thing that has to be done in order yeah. to 
uh, enhance Route 9. So I don't have any objections. I don't either. All right. No, I think it's all for the good. I can't, I can't really imagine what complaints might be, but, you know, if I had a kid trying to sleep and the truck was down shifting at 630 in the morning, I'm, you know, I, I'm just trying to anticipate what complaints we might get. And uh, no, I'm, it seems like a good, good plan. I'm not sure anything's perfect. Mr. Dwyer? The fact that they're planning left turns out and going to the signalized intersection, uh, I think will reduce the, the early, the outbound traffic will be back to Allard Farms and then north on uh, uh, Maple, South Maple Street. So um, I think that will reduce the impact on the, prop, uh, the residences on uh, Mill Valley. How many vehicles will be going in and out daily approximately you know 50 100 300 no uh, for the construction, construction yeah. vehicles yeah um we it depends how many crews we have out there we'll pl we're planning to start with one crew and each crew has uh, one to two dump trucks so the dump trucks would probably be the most uh, frequented vehicle from that staging area as they bring black top to it to temporarily store it or dirt or stone back. Um, they, I mean, they could be making, yeah, maybe say one to two trips per hour. So uh, one okay. truck for the day would be 10 average of 10 trips in and out of there over the course of the day. It's not significant. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, 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 unfortunately the end result is going to be, should be a big improvement on route nine, but it's going to be some, well, it's going to be a disaster for the next four years, to put it bluntly. <laughs> I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. We all realized that when it was presented several years ago. And uh, we just hope that it is a big improvement that is going to be worth all the trouble. Um, you got a consensus of the five members on the board, Mr. Roy, that we don't have a big deal with it. Um, we think it's probably the right place to put this for the time being. Um, it's going to be between a zoning enforcement officer and a board of selectmen just to make sure that everything is as least disruptive as possible, even though, I mean, we know it's going to be disruptive. There's no, anybody that thinks it's not is dreaming. Um, we just try to keep it to a reasonable disruption, whatever that might mean. So good luck. Thank you. And uh, yes. I guess I can, I'll find out from the select board, but I can find out when their next meeting is and plan to attend that meeting as well. If they typically meet. I don't know if they're meeting tomorrow night. They typically yeah, meet yes, on. Uh, they are. Their next meeting is tomorrow night, but that would be probably too soon. Probably too soon. So the meeting after that will be uh, April sixth. April sixth. Yeah, it's a five uh, five Tuesday month. So, so they they are actually, they are actually skipping the last Tuesday of the month. I thought they met every every other Tuesday, regardless. Uh, you, you mean I don't I'm looking at the, the website it says first and third Wednesday of each month. Yep. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow's the third Wednesday. Yep. And as it happens, uh, this, this is a five Tuesday month and a five Wednesday month. So uh, they, they, just be in touch with the town administrator and they'll get you on the next agenda whenever it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I appreciate everybody's time. Thank, Thank you for, for talking. Thank you. Thanks. So we are running a little late for our joint meeting. Uh, I have two other names, uh, Tom Corbett and Randy Iser. Um, I don't know if, are you, do you have something quick or can you hang around while we do our joint meeting to kick off the affordable housing, uh, the housing production plan? Mine can be relatively quick. Um, I was here for public hearing uh, extended. Okay. Oh, okay. This this uh, is for the uh, the batteries. Yeah. Yes. We're back. Okay. What's yours, Randy? One twenty three Russell Street. It's the building to the west of Hopkins Academy. Uh, Rolf Golf owns it. It's he's had uh, his cable. Uh, he 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 owns a cable company they install t 
TV cable and stuff like that. So there's been trucks there. Uh, he want, he's got a business tenant who occupies part of that building, approximately a thousand square feet of it. He wants to add a garage for storage. So my question is, if a building is used just for storage, is it treated as any other business entity in the business zone as far as parking goes? My opinion is yes. Yeah. Okay. I would it's, concur. All right. So I will be back then with uh, a submission. I believe there's already enough parking on the site to cover all the bases. Uh, so I'll just submit a plan and we'll go from there. I'll see okay. you at the next meeting. All right. All right. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, so we don't keep Tom waiting around unnecessarily. Is there anything I know we continue due to this date, but is there anything new to talk about or? I am still waiting for a communication back. Um, our attorney is in communication with town council over a couple things. Um, and we are still waiting for a response there. So I don't really have too much um, as far as progress on that end of things. Um, we are still just kind of communicating back and forth on this in terms of the zoning aspect. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to continue for another month. That would be good. Yeah. Okay. If I, yeah, that's good. And that'll be to April 19. Yeah. Is it a second, Bill? I think so. Second, Matt. Yeah. Okay. Motion a second. To continue this be the public hearing for the battery on Breckenridge Road to April 19th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Tom. So I guess that brings us then to the joint meeting of the Hadley Planning Board, the Hadley Affordable Housing Trust Fund, and the Housing and Economic Development Committee to begin development of a housing production plan funded by a grant from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And I think that would probably be, give Ken the stage. That would be a DLTA grant? Yes. Local technical assistance? Yes. Yes. You're teaching me, Ken. <laughs> Hi, board. Hi, uh, committee members. Um, for those that do not know me, I have been consulting with the planning board for the past <clears throat> years, um, with regards to some of the various initiatives that the planning board looks at, which also includes components of affordable housing. Most recently, doing some work with the board on um, the payment in lieu of affordable units on site. Um, we haven't come to a resolution, but I do think that there is an opportunity here during this particular community planning process to maybe engage with some of those ideas. Um, as, as the agenda item states, this is a, um, a project um, to develop a housing production plan through district mm -hmm. local technical assistance. Um, I will be one of the people on the project, but we are in the process of hiring a housing planner um, who will more than likely be working with um, the board and or a committee of made up comprised of the board and other members of the community and some of your other committees that are overlooking some of these ideas. Um, I will share, I have a very small um, PowerPoint. And Bill, if you could uh, allow me permission to share yes. my screen. I will. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is, um, again, a very small PowerPoint as to maybe touching on um, some of the reasons why you do a housing production plan as well as some, as some of the components and then looking at a timeline. The district local technical assistance work does last until the end of the year um, and more than likely towards the later half of the fall um, after we've had some sort of community engagement component 
um, we'll be working with the committee, with the board on um, finalizing a plan to submit to the Department of Housing and Community Development. But I'll, I'll let, I'll go through the presentation and you'll see where that fits into the process. And if I can just ask a quick question on that, sure. you mentioned the funding at uh, lasting to the end of the year. Do you mean fiscal or calendar year? Calendar year. So this will, this will last until the end of December of this year. Um, so uh, housing production plan, why create and adopt a housing production plan? Um, again, you know, I think the, the town is aware of its housing needs. Um, it has come up in conversations that I've had with members of the community, the town administrator, some members of the planning board. Um, you also, one of the reasons why you have a housing production plan is to address any sort of sunsetting of affordable units, as well as how to get to 10%, because a lot of the communities that we work with um, are not at the 10%. You, however, are. Um, so just understanding the context of where you are with regards to your subsidized housing inventory, um, that will be an important tool in coming up with strategies to maintain that number. Um, but for instance, other, other reasons why to create and adopt the housing production plan, um, unmet housing needs of low and moderate income residents in the community, influencing the type. I think this is becoming more and more important with regards to the variety of housing that is available in the community um, and where it's located. Um, and this, this idea of affordable housing with the capital A-H, um, right? So affordable housing within that context is um, our units that are affordable based on the Department of Housing and Community Development uh, and the US um, Housing and Urban Development Department. So any, any monies that um, or any sort of, the, the context is um, HUD guidelines. Um, assisting communities with meeting the state mandate requiring 10% of total year-round housing units be affordable. Again, you are over 10%. And then possibly preventing unwanted 40B development through a certified housing production plan. After this process, and presumably after a, a, an approval by the planning board and the select board, um, it will be guaranteed more than likely that um, it, you would have cause to deny a 40B um, comprehensive permit or 40B development, assuming because you are over the 10% and because you will have a housing production plan in place. Um, so what does a housing production plan consist of? Again, um, it is based on uh, mass general law. So that is um, this, these numbers here, um, the, the regulations that are under the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, what, what other components are in the housing production plan? You have data. Um, basically, it's an assessment of the housing and need, housing need and demand based on current data, demographics, development trends, and regional growth factors. The new 2020 census data has just come out or is trickling out rather. We have a couple of population data sets and some housing data sets, um, but by the summer we should have the rest of the data sets which will help with regards to um, the data collection component of this project. Um, and the planning board is aware of um, you know, development that's happening in town, the town building inspector will, uh, and the assessor's office will be consulted with regards to development that's happening in town and the understanding of, of what's, what's being developed in town. Um, so other components of a housing production plan include, what are the limitations? What are the things that hamper development, uh, housing development, an analysis of geographic and regulatory constraints, your zoning, um, any sort of environmental constraints, uh, topology, um, watershed lands, um, those particular items, identifying those, mapping them, and um, coming up with places um, that could be um, set for housing production. Um, I shared with the planning board um, two, two planning documents that were done by the town within the past five years. Um, in 2017 was the um, master plan update, which included an update to the housing uh, element. 
um, as well as a 2019 report on affordable housing that was done both by PVPC and um, one of the components is to identify specific sites for housing production and understanding um, where some of those sites may be in town. Um, setting housing goals, including an annual numeric housing production target. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, the, the idea that most of the communities that we, basically this is the, I think you, Hadley is the first community I will be helping that has a housing, uh, a subsidized housing inventory over 10%. But many of the other communities need to quantify how many housing um, units need to be developed in order to get towards 10%. Oftentimes they won't get there. However, like a master plan, like any other, like an open space plan, this is a plan that will state what your housing goals are and some of the strategies to implement. Um, to, to implement, um, to, to meet those goals. Um, which brings me to strategies, recommendations of work, ways to work towards goals. Um, understanding that the planning board will be a um, major partner with regards to zoning bylaw amendments um, and or the affordable housing trust fund, how to get that started and get the ball rolling on that. Um, as well as any of the other initiatives and, um, ideas that have been brought forth by the economic and housing, um, the, e the economic development and housing committee. Um, so these last couple of slides are just um, a proposed timeline. Um, obviously we're having this kickoff meeting, uh, meeting with the joint boards and then determining work group committee who will oversee the process. I mentioned to the planning board um, and I think this is worthwhile of a conversation on who uh, maybe spending, um, you know, is it going to be the entirety of the planning board? Is it going to be a couple members of the planning board who will report back to the planning board um, where the housing production plan committee or those folks that are working on the housing production plan, um, you know, do, does that happen within the context of a regular planning board meeting or outside of that? That's a conversation to have. Um, but the, the first initial component, which I imagine will happen between April and August, is a collection of quantitative and qualitative data on housing and demographics. This is going to be our data collection. This is going to be our GIS, uh, meeting with town staff and officials to need, as needed to obtain or clarify housing issues. Um, you know, I have worked with the board over the past three years and some of the work has included housing issues, particular to the affordable housing uh, component and the inclusionary zoning bylaw. Um, but there may be some other things that are happening within town that um, we're not aware of or um, members on this, on this particular call um, you know, can speak to. Um, within this time too, sharing with the committee the drafts of the introduction, housing assessment and housing development conditions. When I say housing development conditions, again, related to constraints, related to talking about zoning, um, among other things. Uh, committee to review documents within this time, looking at um, who will be reviewing those. Meetings two and three, this being the first one, reviewing initial drafts and providing input. In this time frame, also scheduling a public meeting. Um, what's that public meeting gonna look like? Are we gonna be going into in-person meetings? Are we gonna do a Zoom meeting? Um, so those are conversations to have, um, especially when we schedule it. Maybe an outdoor you know, summer meeting, is that possible? I don't know, um, but we're all ears and we can, we can help um, facilitate that conversation however the town wants to work towards. Um, communities are starting to meet in person or planning for in-person engagements. Um, with advertising for those types of engagements happening in town meeting. Um, that could be something if we come up with a date that you could share town meeting among some other ways to get the word out to get the engagement of the community because that's gonna be a very important factor here. Um, an additional thing that I did not include here is we're gonna do a survey um, or at least introduce the idea of a survey um, that's related to just housing. Um, and um, um, I will say that because the other, the other two housing production plans that I worked on last year were happening at the same time, 
of other survey efforts we were able to piggyback. I don't know if there are, are things happening within Hadley at the moment um, with regards to surveying, if you're working on any other sort of plans um, that we can piggyback off of. Otherwise, you, we don't want to survey people out. Um, and this, you know, this could be helpful and it will be helpful to engage the community on this particular um, component. Uh, part two is reviewing and prioritize identified strategies. Again, one of the big things that we look at in the initial process when we're looking at strategies is looking at your previous community documents, which you have the master plan and the um, affordable housing report, which provides some implementable strategies. Looking at, has the town arrived at them? How is the town meeting them? Are they meeting them? Have they started on any of those? Um, so, Will those be reflected in this part in this plan uh, moving forward? Probably, maybe a couple of them, um, but that is something that will happen during this. Uh -huh. um, review, reviewing the draft of the action plan and then finalizing next steps and planning the final public meeting, which is a meeting um, either to have a second engagement and or a meeting where the planning board adopts the housing production plan. Um, again, um, what I imagine as far as meetings during this time is to look at um, the latter half, which is the actual plan, identifying strategies, reviewing them, um, and then uh, moving on those. And looking at a public meeting, a second one in October, if you feel that that is needed. Um, with regards to community engagement, which will happen between now and the end of the year, virtual meetings, maybe in person, maybe a mixture, doing a survey, um, and then engagement plan to review at meeting two. So the next time we meet, talking about how we're going to get the word out. Um, is it going, we're, obviously we do a press release during the traditional media. Are there people on the committee that are savvy with um, social media, can share um, ways to engage? That's something to talk about. Um, what I've done in other communities, you have a great cable access TV. Um, I've created a PSA. We had talented folks that created a 30 second commercial talking about a housing production plan or a master plan or whatnot. That's something that we can explore. Um, but then also talking within this community engagement component, what those um, public meeting or meetings will look like. Um, and um, the, the last two months, which will be more than likely right after Thanksgiving into December, uh, maybe trickle into January, yeah. but um, making final edits to the housing production plan based on the commu committee, community meetings, planning board and town comments, um, an initial cursory review to be done by the Mass Department of Housing and Community Development, just to ensure that all the components are there if there are any deficiencies, PVC, PVPC will address them. Um, and then for, from that point, committee will secure the endorsement of the housing production plan from the planning board, as well as the select board. And then the town has a final housing production plan. Once that happens, we'll submit it to DHCD because they would have already give it, given its um, initial green light. Um, so I think we take this time to learn more about the committee members um, and who may be wanting to sit on a committee? Um, is the planning board wanting to move forward with um, a committee structure um, and then scheduling a second meeting? Um, and then from that, I think that's my last slide. Just my contact information, which is my name, K C O M I A B C. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions, um, but. Yeah, please. Um... I mean, this is this is basically what the this is an outline of where we need to go and how we're going to get there. Right. But Ken, Ken, in your presentation, not once did I hear the word economics or financing, uh, which is a major constraint. I mean, you can't come up with a plan unless you know where the money's coming from. I think that's going to be the first thing you got to talk about. Well, I you know I think when you talk about strategies, obviously. Um, during that conversation, as similar to the master plan, as similar to the open space plan, 
um, any sort of assistance that the town may need, particularly to um, build a housing, affordable housing trust, uh, trust um, going through the process, um, maybe identifying or um, doing engineering studies on particular buildings or parcels for um, possible development for affordable housing. Um, having those discussions will hopefully elicit um, sources of funding that happen at the state level. Um, I know that there is state money to help the town do some of those things, um, but it, it is an unrelated conversation. I think the larger context of economic development um, is there, but it is not necessarily one that will be, that the committee will be focusing on um, because this is particular to a very prescribed um, process to adopt a housing production plan. This, it sounds to me that this is pie in the sky type stuff. And unless you get back to reality and look at numbers and who's gonna, you know, the, the town's not gonna be in the business of building housing and managing housing. The pri isn't the private sector gonna be involved? Who's gonna be involved? You didn't talk about that at all. I think that that conversation will come up. There's gonna be a responsibility. There's gonna be a responsibility by the town, by committees of the town to maybe have those discussions with private developers and or community development corporations to partner with, with regards to affordable housing development. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, right. yeah, as, as, as part of the conversation, those conversations will come up, but it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't clear in the presentation. It was just an outline of what we were going to do. I disagree with Mr. Sarsinski. I, I, I'm I, glad. Don't, I don't think you look and say, how much money do I have? And then, I mean, it's not like we're going shopping to feed the family this week. This is envisioning where are we in housing? What, what should we do? What would we like to do? And at some point, finance comes into it. But well, ha having that's not the first thing to think about. Wait, 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 wait. The, guys, guys stop, private, stop. Mr. Sarsinski. Having worked in the private sector my whole life, I disagree. Mr. Okay. Mr. Sarsinski, just a minute. Just a minute, gentlemen. We're not here to discuss how we're going to get there. We're just, Ms. Ken is just basically giving us an outline of what needs to be done. All of these, these financial and economic and the rest of the stuff you're talking about is going to be coming out in the meetings and it may come out in a survey and other stuff. Ken's not giving us an end to the means. He's giving us a very 100,000 square foot view of what needs to be done to get to where we need to be. So don't start jumping all over the poor man about where's the finances coming from. He has no clue. <laughs> That's what we need to look at and make a plan of where we can be looking for this stuff. Um, well, I hope we have somebody on one of these committees that can, can address those issues because as I said, if you don't, this is not gonna generate one new unit of affordable housing, I'm sorry. And, and, and the, in, the intent here is not to generate one new unit. The intention of this, of this plan is what can be done, where might it be able to go and Okay. In the meantime, be soliciting possibly okay. if somebody comes into us. Okay. Not, this, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is not this is not a financial. Uh, we're going to build this. The town wants, to be honest, the town wants no part of being involved in this. That's been made ultimately clear by the uh, um, what's the group that owns this? The, the old age home bill. Um, cozy corner. Yeah, no, no, not Cozy oh. Corner, the Golden Age Court. Uh, oh, was cool. Win, Winfield, but I think they've changed. They've oh, Golden Court, Happy Golden, Housing Golden, Authority. Golden Court. Ha Happy Housing Authority. Happy Housing Authority wants no part of being involved in owning these things. They've, given, they've been given that direction by the state. So in that case, it's almost 99.9% .9 going to be private in one way or another. So... The committee can, would you be leading, helping direct this committee of what's going to be going on? Yeah, so um, initially it would be me just to kick off as we get a, um, arrive at a housing planner. But because I work closely with the town, 
um, I would already know, um, you know, how to, how to navigate some of, some of those relationships. But um, yes, myself, PVPC will be helping facilitate the conversation, provide draft reports, and also help the committee, um, you know, with a survey, um, survey tool, as well as community meetings. Um, but that would be our role. Ken, there's one, one particular point. Hadley has uh, a lot of open space, and a lot of this open space is good farmland. And you're going to be emphasizing a very noble gesture to house people who can't afford housing. But we don't want, or at least I don't want, the housing to take place on good farmland because people have to eat as well. I think it's Hadley's responsibility to uh, feed these people because we have the best agricultural land in Happy Valley. They have to eat and smoke tobacco. That's why he mentioned <laughs> geography and whatever our particular town's resources are. That's all going to be taken into consideration is how I heard it. Okay. And, and I, I'd like to throw out the, uh, the statistics. Um, I'm sure members of the planning board have heard these numbers ad nauseum from me, but presently Hadley has roughly 2,200 and 20 units of uh, housing. Uh, of that, 285 are considered, quote, affordable. And generally, the housing production in Hadley is 10 to 12 houses built per year. So at that rate, if we put no more affordable housing, uh, it would take us 40 years to come below the 40, the 10, to come upon the 10% threshold. So the wolf is not at our door. Our surrounding communities, Hatfield has 3.3% of affordable housing. Sunderland only had 1%, but they're putting up some apartments now. South Hadley has 5%. Amherst uh, was creeping below the 10% threshold. I think they're up uh, just a little over 10%. Northampton is right around 10%. And our 13%, or not quite 13%, is the highest in, in, the, in the valley. So uh, I understand from what we were discussing at previous meetings that there may be some possibilities of something happening on Route 9. In other words, business is going to change. And, and uh, there, this is an ideal place to put some affordable housing. And I would probably support something like that because you run a bus route, there's uh, available shopping, uh, you got water, you have sewer, and it's not going to be in somebody's backyard because as noble as a gesture may be, the minute you want to relocate these housing units in somebody's backyard, then you have all hell to pay. Plus the other thing, Ken, from our point of view is the I know of four or five new houses that were built in the past couple of years, and they are all student stuffers. How do you compete with seven or eight students living in a four bedroom house? Uh, and uh, if you're a, somebody, a single person, you're not gonna be able to afford that, but the students you know, divide up the rent so they can afford it. So, Jim, Molly, Molly has a question. Molly. Jim. Thanks, Jim. Um, whoops. So um, just going back to the agenda, I know that Ken had um, is proposing, proposing a committee structure. Um, do you have any more like recommendations for us on, you know, do you want to see representation just from planning board and the housing and economic development committee? Or do you think other like somebody from select board should be involved or what, what is best practice in your mind? The way that I've seen it and the way that has happened with um, the two other communities were um, two members of the planning board, a member or two of the either select board or town council, depending on the community. Um, anyone from the housing authority would be an important, um, having to play an important role. Um, and any other interest, uh, maybe someone from the council on aging, um, with regards to many conversations revolving around senior housing, um, mm -hmm. particularly because um, 
the, the population is aging, how do we age in place? How do we preserve housing for seniors um, so that they can continue living in their communities? Um, also addressing the fact that most seniors um, want to, um, if they are living in a large house, want to downsize um, and live in a you know, one level ranch or one level um, apartment or live in an apartment. Um, those, so, so some of those um, particular committee structures have been employed elsewhere. Um, it really is up, I've, but I've also worked with communities where it was just the planning board. I would advise that because the planning board is very popular when it comes to development review, that maybe some of these conversations happen with, um, you know, a um, member or two of a plan of the planning board that may, you know, attend a monthly meeting um, on, a, on an off night. But that's my recommendation. So how do my, we set up? The, how do we set up this committee, uh, Ken? Just just ask. Just ask. Um, I don't know if the the town administrator or the select board has to. I, I know some some towns the select board identifies ad hoc committees. Um, so going through a process where maybe those individuals are identified and then the select board acts on approving that ad hoc committee. Um, but that's what I imagine. I think um, if that were, you know, how the town wanted to move forward. Yeah. Ken, in, in this case, I think the planning board is the lead agency. Okay. The, yeah. um, the, app, the grant application went in uh, over Jim's signature. Right. That, I good. So I think we can, and I think maybe we do want to, to create a small group, but we yeah. can send an invitation to the select board yeah. to suggest someone. Um, we can invite someone from Council on Aging. Uh, I really concur with Jim. I don't think the housing authority as presently constituted and it has at least one vacancy right now anyway. Um, I don't think they really, they, they seem to be completely uh, absorbed by tenant complaints at Golden Court. Okay. Um, they're, they're not thinking big uh, as, as I see it. I think maybe someone from the Housing and Economic Development Committee I don't think we want to make it too large. Yes. And I also think that if it were a committee made up of less than a majority of any board, we would be able to continue meeting by Zoom. Right. Regardless of what the, uh, the rules are as of uh, July 15th. Right. Yeah, that, that was, I was going to say that the other thing is the, the length of meeting varies directly by the square of the number of people on it. And the last thing you want to do is get a gang of, you know, I don't say half a dozen or seven people because the meetings are going to get nothing but infinitesimally long. And we want to, we, we need to accomplish a lot by the end of the year. So I would suggest two meeting, two members of this board, maybe a board of selectmen. Um, what is, what is the board you're on Molly? The how the Housing and Economic Development Committee. Yeah, maybe and, one of those members. Um, and Jimmy, can I can I just ask? Um, and again, it, obviously, it's entirely the purview of the uh, the planning board. But I think just in the spirit of engagement, um, our committee was the one that actually put this forward initially to try to to see this happen. And I think it would be great if um, two individuals from the Housing and Economic Development That's Committee fine. could participate. That's fine. I have no problem with that. You. So two, two, and one. I think that would make a, a five-member board, five-member committee, not a board, committee. Um, like Bill says, we wouldn't have to be advertising. We wouldn't have to advertise, right, Bill? Uh, I don't believe so. I, I think it's not, not for individual all, meetings. You know, it's not all that burdensome to post an agenda for it. Right. But uh, yeah, I don't think we have to be doing legal notices in the paper. Okay, so we post an agenda, have the meeting, um, and conduct our business with Kim giving us direction. Okay, I mean, so two planning board, two housing economic development, and what was the other one? One from select board. Hmm. Uh, Council on Aging? Do you know? 
or we could ask if they're if they're interested. I don't want to mean they they don't. Uh, we could ask if they're interested. Yeah, and so, and I bring it up, Jim, because they actually had um, I attended a presentation um, that they put on about the senior kind of aging in place and senior housing. Then they're pretty passionate about it, so I'm I'm betting they might like to participate. Okay. Oh, we can leave it. Sense, but... yeah. I'm not sure the select board. Um, I could. Do, I, why don't we leave it as one select board or one council on aging and see what interest there is? Okay. Um, okay. We can, if James steps up, Jane we're, cover we're both. getting into a very busy season right now on the board of selectmen. They may not have time to put much into this. Okay. So I, I would volunteer to be on this committee. I would, I would if Bill isn't going. I don't happy. want to be with Bill. I, I don't feel <laughs> as qualified as Bill. But if Bill has enough on his plate, I would, I would go. I, I, I do, I, I do, because I've been, I've picked up the uh, Joint Transportation Committee. Mm. Bill's on a bundle of stuff. Yeah. We don't want to take him away from it all, from everything all the time. Okay. And so, Jim, if it's, if it's okay with you. Um, I think you know it would be best if we scheduled a, a separate meeting and then we could let you know who the two participants are from our committee. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking to put you on a spot now and ask who it's going to be. Yeah, <laughs> just, but you could let your committee know who to which two would volunteer. Okay, thank you. I just could get back to myself or Bill, and I'll contact uh, I'll contact the uh, council, council on Aging and see who might be interested. I know the uh, their director, Haley, has raised the issue several times. And okay. if she, she is reasonably well versed in this, so I don't know, Ken, is there any requirement that committee members be residents? I don't think she is a resident, but... Um, no, I mean, staff that. people also are, are pretty helpful in the conversation yeah. because they understand some of the, you know, the context. Of, yeah, just out of curiosity, you're, you're, are you on the committee or just an advisor? Oh, I'm just an advisor. I help facilitate the conversation. Okay. You're, you're not a voting member of the committee. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> we're going to be presenting stuff to you. And then you're, you know, we're going to have this a conversation on, you know, what, what other questions come up, what needs to be readdressed. Um, okay. Will it come back to the planning board uh, when some kind of proposals are made or will it go directly to the town meeting? Will we have an input? It, go, it, never, it doesn't go to the town meeting at all. It's the planning board and the select board that have to adopt it before it's sent back to the Department of Housing and Community Development to be certified. So there would be no town vote. Nope, it's not a, yeah, it's it's similar to a master plan where it's approved just by the planning board. Um, well, within the context of uh, mass general law, that that's the requirement. Yeah, because it's not really, it's not committing any tax dollars, right? No, no. there's no commitment of tax dollars. It's, it's similar to any other community plan where the conversations are happening either by committee by members of the community in, through the survey or the in-person or Zoom um, engagement sessions. Um, but presumably, you know, folks that wanted to address the housing production plan would have their, their time to do that when it's time to review the plan, which there would be a community review where it's just posted online, um, as well as at a meeting of the planning board or, and or the select board. Um, so it's, it's the implementation that will go to town meeting. If yeah, any, a, any sort, yes, definitely. If there's a proposal to allow duplexes by right, that's a zoning change. Yep. Now, certainly, I almost can predict what people are going to say at this meeting. Yes, we need more affordable housing, let's say for seniors, for example. And I remember when Barry Roberts had the focus group at 12 to 15 quote, senior citizens, and he showed a picture of a uh, proposed senior housing, one floor living, and uh, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get one bedroom and another small room, probably a study, and uh, no cellar. 
a one car garage. And so, oh, and we only want to pay 200,000 for it. All of a sudden, oh, the bedroom is too small. We want two bedrooms, bigger, bigger. Yes, could we have a two car garage? Could we have a cellar in it? So the demands are going to be almost through the roof. And uh, eventually this is what was built and uh, an East Street Common, and people are paying 350, 400, 450,000 for it. So uh, the reality, the requests are gonna be a little different. So uh, you almost can, can predict what's gonna happen. Well, it, yeah, I mean, friend Molly and I were talking about the Hampshire Mall, for instance, and, and perhaps converting that to uh, affordable housing. When we talk about something like that, we're not talking about purchase. We're talking about rentals, correct, Ken? Um, you know, this, I mean, is, is affordable housing mean you, you can afford to buy it or afford to rent it? Both. So, um, you know, HUD has guidelines. The Department of Housing and Community Development has guidelines for what is affordable to purchase as well as to um, rent. And the important thing, I think one of the contexts of what is deemed affordable or what is affordable to a person um, when it comes to housing is that housing should not constitute 30% or more of your annual income um, for a year. Um, or is it monthly? I can't remember, but it's 30% of what you make. Um, so when that data is presented, it's, you know, it's understanding who's living in Hadley, uh, what they can afford. Um, but that data will be presented in within the context of this report. Um, but if the Hampshire mall happens to be an option for a mixed use product with rental apartments or condos, um, that would come through committee that would come in, in the, in the form of a zone change. Um, and, but, you know, the, the planning board and those that are interested in that happening would go through that particular process to get that done. But, but we don't need this report necessarily to move forward with something. The town doesn't need this report necessarily to move forward with something like that if it presented itself, correct? Um, I would say that it, not necessarily, but I think with the things that are identified within the report, and again, one of the important components is if the town ever happens to be under 10%, there is a possibility of a 40B development, which removes all permitting from everyone but the, concert, uh, but, but the zoning board of appeals, um, which oversees a comprehensive permit. But, um, but Jim, if we continue on our, our present build out, uh, 10 to 12 houses per year, before we get to 10%, it could be a 40 years. And then uh, there's always the question, well, certain units are coming off the, uh, the affordable housing rolls. They're gonna sunset, yeah. But uh, let's see, the one that was immediate was the Mountain View Apartments, and that was coming off the uh, rolls uh, next in 2023. However, there was a water main break and there was a big controversy. Who's going to repair it? So the town repaired it. And I think they got four or five more years extension. So let's say that one's coming off in, in 28. Uh, part of Winfield is coming off in 32, 2032. Uh, I don't sense a lot of urgency. So, but if there's a plan to have a friendly 40B, uh, that's a possibility. Well, having this plan on the shelf would probably make it a lot easier to sell a friendly 40B. You mean the plan on the shelf that we must have more affordable housing? Yeah, well, if we identify the needs as you know, we, we have this document that identifies <clears throat> where we are and where we want to be. Um, it will, I think, make a friendly 40B more a more saleable product. 
uh, when we've had 40 bees in the past, it's been, you know, disaster, right? It's been uh, here, get out of the way. I'm coming in. Yeah. Um, if we have the, the whole backup for what we want, where we want it. And, um, we can, someone comes in and says, I want to do a 40 B we'll say, fine, we'd love to have you do one here, but we don't want you doing it there. And but nobody can come in with a 40 B to us uh, for many years. Well, they can't uh -huh. come in with an unfriendly 40 B, but if they come in with a 40 B that would put a housing in a place that we've identified as we, we'd be happy to have housing there, like okay. Hampshire Mall. We're kind of on the same page here. So, yeah. Okay. Right. So, yeah. So if it, at some point the, um, if, if uh, let's say the cinemas decided that uh, there was no future in showing movies um, and that space became available at Hampshire mall and Hampshire mall um, w was interested in putting in apartments uh, in that space, um, <clears throat> maybe a friendly 40 B would be appropriate. Okay. All right. And sure. we'll have, we'll have, all the background we'll need to prove that. And if we have that blueprint of where we do and don't want it already set, then when the crisis arises or the opportunity arises, we have that already in place to, you know, gird our, uh, our, our argument. Yeah. No, we're, we're not, the town is not going to buy your argument for putting your apartments on good farmland, but we will go along with putting your uh, apartments on land that's been paved for 40 years. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the goal here, Joe, is not to, it, it is to preserve farmland. And that's, that, that's what this whole housing production plan is about, is to make a roadmap. We would, it's okay here. It's not okay here. So that even if an unfriendly 40B comes in, this housing production plan has teeth in it under what I understand can by state guidelines to say, no, you really don't want it there. Yeah. And I, you know, I understand the argument about the 13%, but I don't think it really matters. I mean, if it benefits Hadley from a tax basis and we can help people out, why not go forward with it? I mean, as long as, again, getting back to my point, it's private industry that's building this thing out and now not the town. Yeah. Let's, let's go to 20% affordable if it's a long route nine. I mean, we yeah. know where, where we want it. Going through this report is going to be, like I said, fun, nice. Well, and it's not all People that simple. Gonna, I mean, excuse me. It's not all that simple. There's affordable with a capital A, there's affordable with a lowercase a, there's moderate income. There's, you know, there's, I mean, there are people that don't consider themselves you know, in need of subsidized housing who just can't afford to stay here. So th there's a spectrum. And I think well, that's know, what I heard they're going to look at. So. You're right. John, John Seibuck, our, our representative, retired and he moved to Florida. Well, he has her with, hand with up a, again. With a, with a yeah. state pension. Well, there's probably less snow there. Yeah. yeah. Molly? Yeah, I think John just likes Sarasota, but... Um, yeah, so I just along the line of listening to the, all the questions and, and the comments here, Ken, you had mentioned, you know, the possibility of a survey being included. And, you know, I'm just wondering, um, when you craft that survey, are you going to craft it in such a way that, how can I put it? Um, but you talked about constraints, right? So there, there are existing constraints because, um, you know, we're zoned a certain way today, but, you know, if if the opportunity presented itself and Hadley could change its zoning to allow for you know multi, mixed use whatever we want to talk about um, at a site that's currently zoned industrial, I mean, will will you guide people through that thought process so people don't automatically default to what they think the rules are? If you know what I mean? Yeah. No. So yeah. Yeah. I think. Obviously, we'll use the committee structure. And as I mentioned, I think it's helpful that I work with the planning board because I understand, you know, some of the, the zoning um, that is in place in Hadley. Um, but, 
yeah, the survey will help, um, you know, what I imagine in the survey and, you know, we'll maybe present the committee with a first rough stab um, is um, one of the questions and a lot of the questions that come up in the conversations that I have with residents and the committee will have with residents is what type of housing and where. And those are the types of questions that are addressed through zoning. Um, particularly if you have certain parts of town that are zoned a certain way, um, is there an appetite by the town to explore increased density? I think it's been identified on this call that Route 9 is a, is a, is a good place for maybe where some of that density is located. Hampshire Mall, definitely. Is it, you know, is there, is, is there an attachment to some sort of transit node? Yes. Um, so understanding and providing that context um, of how to navigate zoning and how to understand zoning within the context of what types of housing products are regulated by the town zoning um, will be a question or, you know, there will be a, a group of questions, I guess. Okay. And to Mike's point, it, this you know, we're kind of running a bifurcated path here. So if in fact somebody came forward with something that required a zoning change and wanted to go through the normal process of presenting that to the planning board and zoning board of appeals, they're more than free to do that while this plan is being developed. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 So Mark uh, Howard has a question. Yeah, uh, Ken, you said that the um, that if the, the plan gets approved, and I assume it has to be approved by the state, and then you are no longer subject to the unfriendly 40B. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so, so how long does that last? Does it um, have to be re-approved every so year? That's for five years for the length of the certified housing production plan. So I, I, I didn't mention that in the beginning. Each plan you need to work on every five years. This is to address your housing. Um, most, more than likely the update will look similar. Um, you'll probably be in the same boat in five years, um, but that will prevent um, you know, any sort of 40B developer that wants to develop from developing because you have a certified housing production plan, you're over 10% and. But if, if we were under 10%, would it still prevent or no? No. So it would, prevent. It would, it would give you, it would give the town the ability to address why it's denied and then be tried at housing court um, or the HAC, I forgot the acronym, but um more than likely because you are under 10%. Um, if there was a strong argument by the town, particularly maybe environmental um, and or other things that may be identified in other community plans, it's possible that the housing court would agree with the town. Um, but it wouldn't necessarily prevent you from saying no outright. There's some other... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Well, if you're at 10%, then you're automatically not, you can't have a for, unfriendly 40B, right? Yes and no. Um, I think that I don't, I, like, I've never seen it done that way because it's always been complemented by a housing production plan. Um, so so that, that is something um, we can confirm, but um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get. So I, I do have a, a little background on that. It, it's the appeal route. If you are below 10%, your appeal of the town's decision is to an administrative division of uh, housing and economic development. I guess that, I think that's the department. Um, and that board is very unfriendly to denials of 40 Bs if you're under 10%. If you're over 10% and you deny it, the applicant can still appeal, but they have to appeal directly to the court system. And the, the, there is no bias in the court system against denial of projects when you're under over 10%. So uh, it's just, if, if a town arbitrarily and capriciously denied a um, 40B, 
Um, there still are appeal routes, but they are just um, significantly steeper. Hills to climb, yeah. So, so the, excuse me, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Mike. So the, the cynic in me says that, sense is that the reason this housing production plan program was put in place in the state was to allow certain wealthy communities in the eastern part of the state not to develop affordable housing. You, you get this, you put, get the plan in place and you're good for five years. Wellesley, Newton, Beverly, I don't know. You throw them out, you know? Less than. Sure. Provided, sure. You're, provided you're over 10%. Yeah. Oh, even if you're, no, if you're under 10%, no. you get for five years. No. <laughs> no. That's what I just that. asked. Yeah, no, I, I think there is a, a degree of protection if you're under five. Yeah. If you are under 10% and you have a housing production plan, I believe you do get some level of protection. Some level. But I think, yeah, it again, you, you are you going to, you know, is, is that a, d does the town want to get involved in, you know, defending its denial based on a 40B if you happen to be under 10%? Hadley's over 10%. Right. We want a housing production plan. We got a grant to get us that little bit extra level of protection. If you're under 10%, which we're not, it's irrelevant to the to the cause right here. All I'm all I'm asking is that we, we try to comprehend the politics of this whole initiative. And it's not just about Hadley, it's about somebody in the eastern part of the state that wanted to get this in place to protect wealthy communities from not having to develop affordable housing. Not in my backyard. Okay, that's all. Okay, we've beaten this up quite a bit. Um, so unless there's other concern, I mean, an issue, Mark or I will be on this for the planning board. Molly will present it to her group to find out which two want to be on it. And I will contact the uh, uh, Council on Aging to see, who's, to see who would like to be on it from that group. And... Do we, need, do we need to let you know when uh, when that's done, Kim, so we can set up another meeting with just us to get moving? Yeah, yeah. I think once we have the committee, then we'll just um, create that contact list for the committee. Maybe I'll send out a doodle poll. Um, we can figure out a meeting time um, in the evening, during the day, whatever. Okay. Um, but it'll be over Zoom. Okay. Mark and Molly, are you available during the day if we wanted to meet, or are you best off at night? Usually better after four. Okay. Molly? I'm flexible depending on my schedule. Right. Okay. Yeah, around clients. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very Did good. I make one more editorial comment before we put this one to bed. Uh, in, in the University of Cal, Cal Berkeley, uh, a judge just ordered Cal Berkeley not to accept more students without providing dormitory space. And Cal Berkeley now has to reduce the number of students because they've been pushing them onto the community, making housing not affordable for the, the regular people that live there. So what starts in California may come this way. That would solve some problems. Enough said. Thank you, Joe. All right. What else do you have, Mr. Dwyer? Um, I do just have just, have just the, an office. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, do we have anything else for the housing production plan meeting? Just an observation. In the days of strong county government, this would be an issue I think that would be more appropriate for the county to address affordable housing. You know, that doesn't matter here, but certainly there are states where. It works that way, and uh, just just threw that out. There was a point. There was a you know. Is the this to the council of governments? If, if there is there anybody else have anything else with housing production plan meeting? If not, um, let's. We don't have to adjourn it because there were there were not there a quorum of 
well, I guess there's a quorum of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Uh, there's not a quorum of the uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee. Okay. Maybe there oh. is. Yeah. Um, so I think I'll, I'll just note that this is the uh, end of the joint meeting and we can continue on with uh, our agenda. We have a few, few more things. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is back to Mr. Comia. Um, so I guess one of the Welcome questions- Ken. Could... Welcome, Kim. <laughs> What we left off with was I provided the um, the board with some language and some changes on the special permit for your previous meeting. I know you had a, a big agenda at the last meeting, but I was wondering if there were any initial comments to that. Um, Did we come up a magic word to replace the word finding? Um, or determination or something? Yeah, I think I used determination. Let me just... Oh, I don't have that. Yes, okay. that's what you used. Okay. Well, I said that the determination shall include findings. Oh. <laughs> that all the following criteria. But there, there is no way that a special permit, the, the ZBA is the only board that can issue a finding. Okay. And they will decide if they can, and they also issue some special permits. They also issue variances. So they have the full range. Uh, but only at the ZBA level. The planning board cannot issue a quote unquote finding, capital F finding under 40A. Uh, so um, I think I think it's fine. Okay. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you, baby. I'm with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I looked it over and it it yeah, uh, you know, I'd like to take another look from with my editor glasses on to check for commas and tenses and things like that. But um, I think it, uh, I think it looks, looks good. And I, I agree. It should go into the uh, um, administrative section and we may need to also just amend that little blip uh, that's in the ZBA section. To relate back to oh yeah yeah i know what you mean um so yeah so the the suggestion was let me share my screen again um, was to um add to this board of appeals section, um, just some best practices language for board of appeals. Again, you know, what is suggested, what is um, suggested to the planning board to look at for zoning bylaw amendments is to address the rules and responsibilities in creating that for the planning board. While you're there, you can also maybe amend um, just best practices for the zoning board, which include the ability to get um, peer review for any sort of special permit that it would oversee or any site plan review, um, as well as that they have the ability, um, it doesn't need to be written here, but it's suggested in the planning board section just so for um, balance, um, adopting rules and regulations for that board. Okay. This, this particular language bill, the 6.2.2. Okay. Three. Yeah, let me, um, I don't think you included that, the, those changes in the text that you had sent previously. I like it, but I, I, I don't, just don't think it was. I hope I sent the right one. <laughs> um, okay, so some of the- Or maybe I just don't have the, uh, I, I had, pulled up what I thought was the correct one. The, you, you started off with a list of uh, sort of a roadmap for what spe what special permits are required under various sections. Yeah, so that, that was the, the title of this particular slide. Um, and from there, I included um, some possible warrant articles, which include these amendments um, more that so 
after doing that roadmap of where special permits are required, I identified these particular sections of the current zoning bylaw, um, both in the Board of Appeals section, which is 6.2 to add um, that length. I must have an earlier draft then because um, I just have the uh, general suggested amendment adding special permit. Oh, okay. Um, does the, <laughs> so now 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 um, I'm I'm um, intrigued as to whether the board has seen this document. Um, otherwise, I'll do a quick cursory review, and I apologize if you haven't. Um, I believe I sent it right before it would have been the Friday before your last meeting. Twenty um, fifth is the twenty fifth. So there, this 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 particular file is dated the twenty fifth. Um, and I I do have. Uh, <clears throat> I hope I included the right file. I guess because that. Okay. Uh, okay. I guess. I guess you send it to all of us. I had picked up the draft from your February thirteenth email, and not your not your twenty fifth one. Well, so. okay, well, I think I can just quickly walk through them because some of the changes I think are self explanatory. Some probably may require some additional conversation with the board and on and on <clears throat> um, so as I mentioned earlier, just amending those par two particular sections in the Board of Appeals language to balance out with what I'm suggesting for the planning board, which is creating a new section 6.3, which enumerates the powers and responsibilities of the planning board, both as a special permit granting authority and to um, review site plans pursuant to your current site plan review process. Um, also, as I mentioned, um, with the, the above section, the 6.3.2 and 6.3.3 .3 also now just creates the, um, the language for the planning board shall adopt rules and regulations, as well as they may adopt reasonable administrative fees um, and also um, procedures and fees for employing outside consultants. Um, this is this is really the I think what um, we have been discussing with regards to special permits is to um, create a, a little bit of process with regards to how um, to approach them because I think as I mentioned earlier it's like tucked away and it it, it gives those powers to the board of appeals. Yeah. Um, but this is particular, <clears throat> there are some additional considerations here that may or may not fit um, with some of your ideas um, as far as when you approve a special permit or when a special permit granting authority reviews a special permit. Um, these are the, the various things that um, the various criteria that you would base your approval. Yep. No, I understand. So uh, going, uh, your suggestion regarding uh, site plan approval special permit, uh, there is a reason we chose that as a okay. special permit. Uh, sure. There was a case out of Boston that um, interpreted their site plan approval and it said that any appeal from grant of basically the Boston case said any appeal from a grant of site plan approval goes to the ZBA before it goes to the court. And um, it just seemed redundant to have us spend, you know, three months approving a project and then have it go have it have it appeal to the ZBA. Um, and there was also a question about whether, um, the, um, building inspector. Yeah. The, the, there was a question of whether the only way to appeal, um, would be 
the building inspector's issuance of a building permit to the ZBA. Um, I'm forgetting some of the details now, but there was a specific reason why we went to a special permit for site plan approval, primarily for appeal purposes, to make it clear that the appeal from denial of a special permit or the appeal from allowance of a special permit was directly to the courts and not to the ZBA. Yeah, I, I think I might, I might be able to explain that a little bit more reasonable there. The issuance of the special permit by the planning board for site plan approval was an appeal to the building inspector when within, I think it's within 30 days of the issuance of the building permit by the building inspector. That meant that if an aggrieved party didn't like the planning board's decision, they had to wait for the issuance of the building permit by the That's building right. inspector. And sometimes they'll apply for site plan approval today and not go for the building permit for a year. So now the aggrieved party needs to stay in constant connection to the building inspector have they applied? Have they applied? Have they applied? And pounded the poor building inspector to no end. And if they miss that, and, and the same thing, if we deny the permit, it was, a, it was a disaster in either case. So we went to the special permit category, not that it is a true special permit, just that the process is a special permit. We give you a permit, we approve the site plan approval. You have, it's filed with the town clerk. There's 20 days. Everybody is notified in writing when that 20 days is kicking, you appeal it or not. And it's a standard process. And even the approval of the uh, attorney general specified that. And that's why if you look at our zoning bylaw, there's a caveat at the, ex at the end of it that says the special permit is not a true special permit except for the appeal process only. We do not have authority to deny site plan approval under the special permit process. Okay. It's a, it was a complicated matter that we tried to simplify. You, 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 you explained it quite well, Jim, because it was initially a site plan review and then we changed it yeah. To, okay. Site plan permit. And you're right. It, people were laying in the weeds and waiting for the building inspector to go on vacation. Yeah. And they never do that. It, it, it became a, uh, for lack of a better term, a logistical nightmare with the various building inspector and everybody else. And so we simply tried to clear it out that way. So I think what I'm understanding is that it's all about the nuance of using that word. It's not necessarily the process by which your site plan approval. It, exactly. It, it, it is strictly the approval or denial of, a of the site plan where the, site, where the special permit kicks in. Okay. So then this can remain. So where I have the proposed strikeouts because I was confused based on the, uh, the, the inclusion of that language in this particular section, that, that can remain. Um, I think with that said, um, the suggestion to move because we're suggesting that the administrative section have now the Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, also special permits. Does commercial site plan approval go into this particular section because it's the administrative of the, of the zoning bylaw? It's administ administering the zoning bylaw through that particular process by which approvals occur. Um, that's the consideration for the board which would mean that all citations elsewhere in the board that, that um, refer to commercial site plan approval would need to be fixed. Um, I don't know if that's something that the board wants to do. Um, 
it doesn't, you know, it, it, it just as far as um, best practices where the board and the various things that are administered through for the zoning bylaw would fit. Um, it doesn't need to be moved, but that's just a consideration. Um, and I think there was some, this commercial site plan approval and how it corresponds with your use table. Would you want to address site plan approval labeling special site plan approval throughout the table or with criteria when uses are listed with a P? Um, and I think this just came up as I was looking randomly, um, particular to small scale of solar, um, how there is a requirement of a site plan approval, um, but do you want to spell it out in the use table where P, the P is listed as what, you know, what you would need to happen in a small scale solar? You lost me. So I think in in the small scale solar, um, in your use table under small scale solar, you have. Um, let me see. I don't have it bookmarked, but I think I can quickly find it. And so my suggestion is where you have site plan approval um, because you don't have site plan approval as a use designation, listing those where you would have site plan approval. Um, and the example that I provided was small scale, uh, small scale where it, it shows a P. here. Or maybe that housekeeping for another day. Bill, I think you're muted if you're if you are trying to address the board. He is muted. He could be talking to the cat. Oh. <laughs> Even worse, the cat could be talking to him. Would you repeat what you said about the small scale solar count, Ken? I, I missed something so, there. Well, from my, my understanding of how you have approved small scale, um, because I think I was sitting on a meeting where you approved it with, through administrative waiver or administrative process. Um, but I think it falls under site plan approval, like how you go through that process because your administrative process is under that. Do you want to include the areas where the where the planning board, which serves as the site plan authority, approval authority, where those instances within the table of uses occur, where this should be an SPA rather than a P. Because mm -hmm. P implies building permit, at least how I would read it, um, where some towns have used SPA if it was particular to that review process. That makes sense. Yeah, but we're not, we, we, if, if we use site plan approval, people are going to quickly look at it that they're going to have to go through a very extended process. And that's not the case. So if, if, if in those cases, we may have to make a new letter, um, C-section solar energy systems. I don't know. I think... I mean, because it's in there, as you know. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm good. People have been getting that the way we're doing it. Um, C section 23, 28, I mean, solar energy. I, I would hesitate to put site plan approval there. I think we should leave it the way it is, my opinion.
So they're going to come to me and I'm going to send them to you anyway. That's right. So, yeah. And it, it's an administrative review that's, it, it's, yeah, it takes 40 days. However, once they find out between the building inspector and the planning board that you give us the plans, we review them, we look at them, and you come in for a, a, an informal meeting um, without notification, and nobody's going to be appealing it without a whole bunch of expenses, we haven't had a complaint. And it's been working very well. Okay. Um, so that was just something that I found randomly. Um, and I think that that makes sense to me. Um, and if the board wants to look at that later, then they can look at that later. Um, but with regards to special permits, um, there really is some boilerplate language um, that's creating uh, a process, um, some considerations based on what you as a board have put into your um, decisions for special permits, as well as the inclusion of um, some language that, you know, that particular use is consistent with the master plan um, and yeah. So it takes into consideration what you've used on your decisions, put it on here, um, particular to special permits. And now there's a new section based on that. Where did I see in there, Ken, that the planning board and two other members appointed by the board of selectmen shall review something? Yeah, so that, that what was- are those associate members under 6.3? So that is because I think the zoning board has something. Oh, no, they don't. Um, so my suggestion is, you know, and you don't have to take it, is um, the way that when you're establishing a planning board, how I've seen it done in the past is establishing that the planning board has five people um, and maybe two associate members, if that's what the town wants. Um, and so really it, it's just a sentence that can be deleted. Um, it, it's just the context for the planning board. It doesn't even need to be there, but that is establishing this particular section, that's all. What's the function of the two associate members? Uh, to serve as members if you have an absence uh, on special permits. Oh, so they're almost like, like alternates or something. Not necessary, I don't think. Yeah. Bill, you're on mute. Richard Stuper. Yeah. yeah. The uh, as applied to Hadley, it's an elected planning board, and having appointed members stepping in. Um, Hello. And that kind of conflicts, huh? Yeah. It it just seems sort of contrary to the spirit. Um, I, I will take a little while and I will look at, now that I have the, the correct, the, the 225 draft, I'll, uh, I may take a run through that too. And uh, there's some areas where, um, yeah, some of the filing requirements for the ZBA, yeah, there, there's, there are a couple of areas that there's a little bit of roughness there that I'd like to maybe try to plane out. For sure. Yeah, I'm not sure we need section 6.3 because that's sort of established in statute and we adopted the statute some time ago. So a uh, long time ago. Uh, um, But it, yeah, we otherwise have, uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I want to, uh, I'll take another look at it. Not for tonight, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't know if we've reached any consensus yet on um, a battery only energy storage. I think it might be something that could just be addressed by changing the definition of a solar system. Oh yeah, has anybody 
Yeah, I mean, we've done a lot. I've done, I haven't seen anything that says a battery is a totally bad idea. Um, a lot of things on why it's great, different, a few things on what to, to look out for. But I think as long as we know what to look out for, we could put that in, maybe put that somehow into the uh, uh, definition. And the biggest one is lithium batteries, obviously. That anything to do with a lithium battery takes some careful consideration by the planning board and the fire department. Batteries, batteries leak, Jim, eventually. So we have okay. to have some kind of bond for removal. Yeah. And, and so if somebody walks away from it, we don't want those batteries and we'll have to dispose of it. Same thing as we have with the solar system. Right. Yes, Tom, you had your hand up? Yeah, we had a uh, really good training last Tuesday. Louise Vera put on State Inspector. And there was at least four other inspectors. One said that their town, this has come up a lot. And everybody's waiting for determination um, because they're not coming from solar. They want to put these in. And they're independent companies. And there's one, I can't remember which. Anyway, one of them, supposedly the council or whatever has said that they, they can't allow it. But it's in, and it's kind of in a gravel pit in an area like that, but there's high wire tension wires above it. So it's, it's still in you know limbo, but there's a lot of our next training. If anybody comes up with any information, they want us to share it. So it isn't just in Hadley that we're dealing with that. Okay. I like the idea of it having at least some degree of, if, if it's not storing all of what's generated on site, at least some of it is being generated on site because I like the idea of having panels around it because if you had a battery like you do out behind the mall, if that if that burns, the only thing that's going to burn are their their solar panels. But if it burns up on Breckenridge, you could start a forest fire. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you've got the solar that is generating from, then you generally are in a more open area. So I feel a little safer with the hazards. Agreeing with you, Mark. That's, that, that's not bad. I mean, maybe we don't want plain battery storage. Yeah. Or, or if we do, maybe in an industrial area, not in a residential. Right, area. right. To be discussed more. Yeah, yeah. I would no, keep I it out, out of out of uh, R or AR. Yeah, I agree. Unless it has the solar around it. Right. If it's storing what's being generated on site. Yeah. And if it's not, then you can go into the industrial zone. I think that's a good good starting point for Joe to draft up a new. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, if, if the only thing that we would need to change in the definition would be, and if you have solar, batteries are permitted because it says right in there, batteries, accessory, Prep or whatever the exact word is. Well, storage. But I if mean. it's going to be batteries only. Storage only without generation. Only in the industrial zone. Right. Uh, yes, yeah, storage is, is, is allowed by right in generation sites. And without site generation, you have to be in the industrial zone. But could you, could you, uh, Manipulate that rule and, you know, okay, so I put in two solar panels. I'm generating electricity there. I'm going to put in a solar field. I mean, a, 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 a field of batteries, well, uh, panels there. I think you've got to, you've got to give some dimension. You, 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 we, could, we could put some percentage on it. Let's say they want to put batteries in. Then they got to generate at least 50% of the power right. of the battery storage, something like that. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, because you're right. Somebody could put in 30 panels and put in five megawatts of battery. They're going to they're going yeah. to generate 30 yeah. kW, 10 kW. They're going to put in five megawatts. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not. Yeah. Okay. As Mike said earlier, NIMBY. Yeah. 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 I still got your chocolate. 
<laughs> NIMBY Mark is uh, there's an editorial what was in the uh, Speak for Republican about the the guy wants the uh, he's I love solar but I don't want it in my backyard. It's basically the editorial coming in the Springfield Union, as well as the people in Amherst. Yeah, uh, they love solar, but not, not where I walk my dog. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> It'll spoil the view from my backyard. Yeah. You can put it in Tommy's backyard. I'll, I'll try to put something. I'll try to make some modification to the solar bylaw definition and stuff, and put it by everybody. Let them see what they think. Okay. Oh, Ken, could you send me the PowerPoint definition that you just presented on the uh, housing? Help the proposal plan? Yeah. Please. Thank you. Oh, um, yeah. The HPP presentation? I'd, I'd like a copy of that, Jim, after you get if, if If I'm going to be on there. Okay. Max yeah. says it's time for dinner. Oh, <laughs> um, Mike, I'll pick you up. They're, I just called them. They're open till 9 30 in the kitchen. Okay. You know, okay. just, I know, know we're off the affordable housing thing, but you know, Railroad Street, that whole little strip there, just dilapidated buildings, graffiti, whatever, that would be a great place to put something in. I, I don't know who owns it. I got I to gotta guess. I, I, I yeah. probably know who owns it, but I don't want to talk about it. Michael, did you read the article about East Hampton? That they're, uh, they're creating a registry of vacant buildings? I think you pay $100 a year, and... Wow. And you're on that list so they can try and get them more accessible to developers well it's really an eyesore it's really i don't know if you've gone down there and by the way i hear that uh if you're looking for some heroin uh dealers hang out on railroad street now okay so i don't, I don't know if the cops know that but uh that's the word i got Oh, I guess we travel in different circles. <laughs> well, you, you're right. So, <laughs> your feet will go. We have a huge problem with the marijuana. Uh, in house uh, in, all right, house we won't go there. Let's, yeah. I think we are set for removal of improper storage. Jim put a draft together. Yep. Okay. Uh, read, read by everybody. Uh, I commented. Uh, Tom likes it. Um haven't gotten too far on standard conditions just been too busy for that affordable housing trust fund updates done planning board procedures i don't think we have anything going there right now do you have any bills jim no nope, i have nothing uh future discussion topics um i was asked to put uh megan's way i sent around the letter from the um Town Administrator Carolyn uh, announcing to us that there has been a petition to have Megan's Way accepted. I was going to put it, uh, she asked me to put it on our agenda and I forgot, um, but um, just we can have a preliminary discussion. We just can't act on it. Um, Did, didn't we approve that a year or so ago subject to the DPW? We may have. Yeah, I believe we approved Megan's way subject to DPW comments. So I'm not, do we have to approve it again? I think that since it did not uh, proceed at that time. Right. I, I think. Okay. I'll put I think there's a, a link between the meeting at which it is being heard. So okay. uh, yeah, that was my memory that I think we all are uh, okay with it subject to DPW approval and the um, acting director of DPW, I believe, has approved it. Okay. Uh, I'll ask him for confirmation, just an email. Uh, okay. And uh, we should be uh, we should be good. Um, we get. I'll I'll get it on the agenda for uh, next meeting. Uh, next meeting. Hey, okay. April's just around the corner. Any um, anything brewing with the river frontage and permits and concom? Is that all quieted down? You got a couple of questions when you guys are done. I just got two quick. I will, you want to discuss it today, but just to think about next meeting, um, I got a couple of challenges I wanted your opinion, guidance, or help on whenever you're ready. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. The campers, I'm, I'm going to be challenged with the setbacks. 
Uh, we've already heard from council, the setbacks, the way it was written are fine. It has to be in that zone. But the question I'm getting from more than one resident is that what about their camper, you know, their neighbor's camper that's sitting there that's on the driveway that's, you know, uh, two feet from their property? Who's, you know, do I have to go out and enforce that? You know, it's sitting 10 feet from the road in their driveway. Do I have to enforce the 50 feet there? So just something to think about there, how, how I'm gonna, that challenge I'm going to have. I could get some help on that. Okay. How many of those problems do you have, Tom? Well, they're going to come up with everyone they see. You know, the two or three that are, you know, going to come at me with it. Okay. Uh, once we start, once they start enforcing it, it's, it's going to be a. So you're you know, saying, so you're saying you're you're expecting to enforce new ones, but what about existing? Well, no, I, I'm going to. In order for me to enforce them on the river, yeah, people are questioning why can they have them in their driveway. Oh, okay. Within the 50 feet, within the 15 feet. Uh, and I just want, I haven't done a lot of research, but if you could think about it and we can just come up with a solution, I think that might be a challenge that they'll win. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's pretty straightforward. I think <clears throat> we sort of went through that when some last year, when <clears throat> someone asked if they could have a friend move their RV to my backyard so they'd have a, a place to shelter from COVID. And I think uh, it was Jim that brought up that would put you into two residential, uh, two dwellings on a lot. But what yeah. about storage? This would be, you know, you're, you're driving down Florida in the winter and you keep it in your yard. So if it's, it. if it's there parked for storage, I don't care if it's a camper or a, um, a semi-tractor. Um, it, it's not, it's, it, it's, it doesn't apply. Um, if it's not plugged in and all that, right. yeah. If you're using it as a dwelling, the only place we allow RVs as dwellings are along the river. So uh, it doesn't matter if you park it and you're blocking your neighbor's view. Uh, that's that's between you and your neighbor. Um, okay. But if it's not being used as a dwelling, it, there's no setback requirement. And it can't be used as a dwelling because of the way the bylaw is written. Only the river, only property with river frontage can support campers in season. But Bill, how about how about the preamble in the zoning regulations or the zoning bylaws? Nothing is allowed in the town of Hadley except and it listed, listed, listed. So it doesn't if it doesn't list uh, trailers as storage or trailers as uh recreational vehicles or what it's not allowed does that i i don't i i think that personally i think it's a parked yeah. rv is no different than a parked car um now if you have six licensed cars and you're lined up against your in in your yard as long as they're licensed uh, i suppose you can do it well to be discussed okay yeah Okay, what you what you have time? That's everybody happy, and that'd be great. And then the next one I'm, I have, and I've got one I want to won't talk about the address, but a century apartments. Um, in the building code, I can't, I can allow five, you know, kitchens, and there's nothing to stop it. it it's it's, uh, you know, it's allowed by right with the building code, and I have one that I believe is going to try to. Um, turn it into accessory apartment and I want to avoid it. The plumbing inspector, I discussed it this morning. Um, I, I dealt with this in another community years ago that it was actually a planning board member. It is an accessory apartment is not allowed in the town. And they sent a friend of theirs to pull the permit saying they will, you know, really in the description they put there will not be a cooktop oven or range and they will not put a hookup for a washer and dryer. And legally I would have lost in my opinion, because I can't deny those things. Um, they did write it that way that, you know, they put that as a description. That's how we put it in there. It never was in question, but they weren't happy because I, you know, legally in the building permit cannot deny those things because you can have, you know, a, a, a kitchen in your basement, you know, as a pool house, you know, you get, there's no limit to the kitchens in a house. Um, One dwelling per lot. Exactly. But th this would be, we, we, we saw the way the application came in and, and I'm questioning it. We'll see what the answers come with my, you know, my review from the actual applicant, but 
it's in question that it's going to be an accessory, you know, apartment and how they come up with it. I mean, I'll, I'll make sure that the, you know, whether it's on sewer or whether it's on um, septic, they'll have to go to board of health and upgrade the bedroom to, you know, a third from a fourth or the impact fee, yeah. you know, and catch all, try to catch all that. Mm -hmm. But um, it's the, you know, fact of how you do the, how we challenge with this comes up because it, you know, if they are using it as that, I'm going to get it later on and, you know, I don't want to go against you as the board because it's supposed to go in front of you. So this is some. I, I, I guess I missed the first part. This is someone who is doing an addition to the house or work yeah. in the house. And, and I may be wrong. They may be, you know, going to just add it, you know, do it as a, uh, a master suite, whatever you want to call it. But down the road, if it does turn into because they want to put, a, you know, another kitchen there. Um, and it is rented out. It's going to be a challenge. And it's almost like I permitted it without your approval. And they're saying it's a master suite. You yeah. know, a recreational kitchen, uh, how, whatever you want to use it, a butler's, you know, kitchen. Um, so just something to think about because I have dealt with that before and I don't want to step on your toes. And, you know, I, I've, I've asked the questions that I think I'll get the answers, whether it is or not. But just in case it comes up. So I don't think we've we've never turned down an accessory apartment application. We have had two that were withdrawn in the face of neighborhood opposition. But um, you know, there's there's no reason why someone would want to <coughs> dodge the planning board by not going for an accessory apartment special permit that I can think of. Uh, it's it seems like it would just enhance their options. Right. But that's what I, I try to explain. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do all that if this, that's the case. But um, I guess I just want to let you know that I can't deny the kitchen and, and, and all that in the code. Okay. Just, I understand that. We um, just need to try to catch the fact that it is that and, and get them in front of the, the board. Or is and it? We have, we have two kitchens. But what if they're going for three? So they're basically turning it into like a multifamily or something. Is that uh, no. Basically, came from it was Gordon Bailey in a couple of his trainings. He's a retired state inspector that he could have five. The code does not restrict anything. Mm. <clears throat> <sighs> so, I think it'll be under control. But just in the future, something to think about so we can all work together on it. Okay. Thank you. Tom. Thank you. Laws, rules, and <laughs> guidelines are like fences. You build a fence and. Mankind will find a way to get around it, under it, over it. Yep. Oh, yeah. And that is all I have. I have nothing else. Anybody have any else? No. Hearing none. Motion to adjourn. So I'm moved. moved. Second. Second. And a second. Thank you, Ken. Before we, before we sign off, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, John. Yes. All in favor of motion yes. to adjourn, say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.